All right. These notes are about the change in heat that is involved in the different states of matter. You probably learned this very early on. Solids, liquids, and gases are the three different states of matter. And you all know that in order to get something to change from a solid to a liquid, you have to add heat. Liquid to gas, you have to add heat and vice versa. But let's start talking about what the particles look like. If I were to have you draw a solid right now, you would draw these guys really close together. All right, and as they're close together, they're going to have some interaction in between each particle, e either an atom or a molecule, depending on what the small particle is. We've talked a little bit about bonds, and I, well, a lot about bonds. Ionic bonds, of course, are positive and negative attraction. And then you have covalent bonds, and you can have nonpolar molecules and polar molecules, depending on the pull of those electrons. Well, if something's polar, it's going to have more attraction to the other particles around it than something that's nonpolar. And that all affects how easy it is to get something to melt or boil. And you'll get into much more of that in AP. But uh, we're going to go through some of the basics here, so hopefully you'll have a good understanding to start off in the fall. When a substance changes from one state to another, the first thing that's important, the temperature does not change. Believe it or not, if we were to put a uh, block of ice in the room and we had a thermometer embedded in it, as long as that ice was in the process of melting, it would stay at zero degrees. You can get a ice water bath that will stay at zero degrees as long as it's a good mixture of the ice and salt. Once the or ice, once the ice is all melted, then it's going to start to warm up. Or if you're freezing it, as once everything is frozen, it'll the temperature will go down. All right, but temperature does not change during a phase change. That is the hardest concept for kids to understand. But that's hopefully I'm going to be able to help you with that. Now, when a substance melts, it absorbs energy. We've already defined uh, energy and energy being given off and, and energy being taken in. So if something's absorbing energy, it's taking energy in. So those are endothermic processes. And if something's freezing, it releases energy. So that's an exothermic process. The very first textbook that I taught with 30 some years ago was had an orange on the front that had ice on it. Let's see if we can find a picture or something on those lines. Let's see. Oh, oh hello. I don't know what I did. Um Here we go. And it actually has the question at the bottom that I want to ask. Why do orange growers, I can't make that bigger, spray their crops with water when it's going to freeze? Okay, and you have a picture here. You can see the oranges. If you've ever been to an orange grove or a vineyard even, you'll see big uh, fans. And they have the fan blow to keep the air moving around. But if it's going to get cold in Florida, they start to worry about the orange crop because if it gets too cold, those oranges will freeze and then they're no good. So what they do is they use those big fans and they put a fine mist of water out that coats the, the uh, fruit. Then that water begins to freeze. As that water freezes, it's got to get its molecules, the liquid. Those molecules have to slow down and come closer together. As to, in order to slow down, they've got to release energy. So, in an ex, in a uh, 
that situation where someone is something is freezing, it's releasing energy. Therefore, it's exothermic. So it actually keeps those little oranges warm to have that ice as it's the water as it's freezing to become ice. All right. Now we are going to call the what we call heat of crystallization. We've already introduced specific heat. Specific heat is the, how a substance responds when it's being heated or cooled. Well, heat of crystallization is the specific heat of something while it's either melting or freezing. The symbol we use is the th symbol for enthalpy, enthalpy, which is delta H, and we use heat of fusion, we use a little F or FUS, and that means the energy that is needed to be absorbed to change from a solid to a liquid uh, or released if you're going liquid to solid all right it's always a positive no well no if it's if you're heating it, it's going to be positive. If you're removing heat from it, it's going to be negative. And uh, the units for that guy are joules per gram because it's the energy based on how much you have. It has nothing to do with the temperature change because there is no temperature change. Specific heat is joules per gram degrees Celsius, but we're not talking about that. And we use that delta H at FUS that I just showed. Heat of vaporization is the energy needed to be absorbed to change from a liquid to a gas or released gas to liquid and because we're talking about a gas we're going to talk about vaporization okay so basically we're going to be talking about what's going on as phases change here we have some basic information we have a graph on this side we're going to have temperature on the bottom, we're going to have energy, and we're going to assume energy is being added. All right. Let's draw, we're going to be working with water. So let's draw our melting point of water, which we've already talked about is not 100, zero degrees Celsius. And no, we don't have to change it to Kelvin. We can leave it in Celsius. And the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? We are going to start with ice at the temperature of negative 30. So I'm going to switch colors here. We're going to start out at negative 30. And we're going to heat it. So if it's a negative 30, what phase is it in? Well, it's going to be solid, right? And we're going to heat it. It's going to heat up until it begins to melt. What temperature is it that it melts at? It starts melting at zero degrees. So the first leg of our graph is going to be from negative 30 to zero degrees. What happens when it hits zero degrees? It begins to melt. The temperature doesn't change. So we're going to have a flat line. And we have melting going on right here have a flat line, we're going to be absorbing energy, but that's it. Once we get all of that ice melted, then we will begin to heat up until we get to 100 degrees. So now we're a liquid, and our particles are moving faster as we're absorbing heat. Once we reach 100 degrees, we will flat line again because we have to boil. Fancy name vaporization and we don't have a temperature change during a phase change 
the last bit after we've completely boiled it we have that steam and it tells us we're going to go all the way up to 110 degrees so you can see that our graph has five sections and I've color coded them because I can so now we're going to do the math and figure out the energy that had to be added to this in order for it to occur. So, our first segment, segment one. What's happening? We've got a solid, and we have a temperature change. If we have a temperature change, we're going to use MCAT. What was the mass of our ice? 25 degrees. I'm sorry, 25 grams. It's ice, so we need to look on the specific heat of ice. We could look on in the data table that you have. Um, well, I don't know if there's a data, data table. There's not one in your notes. You could look on the Internet and look it up. But the specific heat in this worksheet uses CP for specific heat. We just use C. We have the specific heat of water when it's a solid, when it's a liquid, when it's a gas. We're going to use solid. So we're going to use two... 0 0.05 joules over grams degrees Celsius. I'm going to erase these other two so that they don't get confusing. And we had a temperature change. You do final minus initial. The final temperature was 0. The initial temperature was negative 30. So we're going to have a 30 degree temperature change. And you just multiply it out. And we get, assuming I did the math right, 1537.5 joules because Celsius cancels and grams cancel. Okay, number two, do we have a temperature change? We do not. So instead of using MCAT for a phase change, the formula we're going to use is going to be mass times either the delta H of fusion or vaporization. And the, we've got MCAT is our way to remember, our shorthand way to remember the equation to, for heat. Well, we say ma, and you have to kind of exaggerate that because it makes you sound sillier. So this second equation, we don't have a temperature change, so instead of using MCAT, we're going to use MA. The heat of fusion for water, for heat of fusion is at solid, so uh, ice becoming liquid, is 334. So we're going to have 25 grams times 334. Our units are joules per gram. Grams cancel. And we get 8,350 joules. Third step. Now we're going to go from 0 degrees to 100 degrees. So we have a temperature change. So we're back to using MCAT. 25 grams. 4.184 joules over grams degrees Celsius, and our temperature went from 100, from 0 to 100, so we multiply 100 times 4.184 times 25, and we get 10460 joules. Our fourth segment is going to be while it's vaporizing, it's becoming a gas. So now instead of using MCAT, we're going to use MA. And our heat of vaporization is 2260. And our energy is 5 or 56,500 joules. Our last segment then, we've got steam. 
and we're going to go from 100 to 110. So we need the specific heat of steam, 2.09. And we get 10 times 25 times 2.09, 522 joules. All right, now look at those numbers for a moment. You had the same amount of substance. Which one took the most energy to have the change occur? The first change, number one, we were going from a we were just staying solid, we were just heating up, it took 1,500 joules of energy. The second one we had to melt, it took 8,000 joules of energy. The third one we had to warm up that water, it takes a long time to warm up water, so that was 10,000 joules of energy. Then in order to change that water to a gas, it took 56,000 joules of energy. That's a lot of energy. And finally, it didn't take much energy to heat the steam up. Okay? Why is it? Why does it take so much more energy? Well, you have to, it has to do with breaking those intermolecular forces. All right? Becoming, changing from a liquid to a gas. Think about it. Liquid particles are close together, but they can move over each other. Gas particles are not touching. So in order to become a gas, you have to get these guys all away from each other. And water's fairly sticky. It attracts other water molecules, so it takes a fair amount of energy to get those particles to move apart. All right, last step. We gotta add them all up. So we've got this guy plus that guy plus that guy, that guy. So I'm going to do that. When I added that all up, I got 77370.05 joules. Okay, sig figs would be 77,000 joules. All right, the next one. How much energy is needed to raise the temperature of 80 grams of gold from 875, we're going to start at 875, and we're going to end at 1120 degrees. Now, we're going to start with gold at 875. Is it going to be a solid, liquid, or gas? Well, gold melts at 1,000. That's higher than 875. So we're going to start with him as a solid, and he's going to heat up until he begins to melt. So there's our first line. After he get, reaches 1064, he's going to be able to melt. After he is completely melted, then he's got the ability to heat up again. And he, is he going to make it to 1120? Why, yes, because 1120 is lower than 2857. So we're going to go all the way up to 1120. This graph's going to have three equations. It's going to have the first equation which is the equation for heating up the solid. The second equation is for the melting to occur. And the third equation is for the uh, liquid to begin heating up. Okay, so for one, line one, we're going to use MCAT. We had 80 grams of gold. Our specific heat of gold when it is a solid is 0.129. And we went from 875 to 6, 1064, which is 
289. So we'll multiply those three together. 80 times 0.129 times 875. The second line, no temperature change, so we're going to use ma. 80 grams, specific heat of fusion, 62.95. No temperature change. And that is going to be 5,036 joules. Our third line, we're going to go from 1064 to 1120. So we're going to use MCAT again. Oh, wait. 80 grams. The heat of uh, the in specific heat capacity of gold at the liquid state is 0.157. And our temperature change was 1120 minus. 1064, which if I did my math right is 56 degrees. Seven hundred and three point three six joules. Then we add them together. Seven hundred and three point three six plus 50, 36, plus 90, 30, 1, 4, 7, 6, 9 joules. We had three sig figs, so we'll call it 14,700 joules. You could also write it in kilojoules if you wanted to. That would also be acceptable. Both of these, the temperature was going up, so it has to be a positive relationship. All right. I'm going to have you guys do these next ones for practice. I'm going to help you with what you're going to, your graph's going to look like. This one, if you notice the wording, it's cooling. So your temperature is still on the y-axis, but this one, if it's cooling, the energy is being removed. So you're going to go from 50 down to zero, down to minus 10. Then calculate each of those segments. The second one, we've got 10. We're starting at 25 degrees. We're going to heat up to 231.9, and then we're going to melt. The third one, our peak, is 2,192. We're going to start at 28. We're going to heat till we get to 961, at which point we'll melt. Then we'll heat to the boiling point, which is 2163, and then we'll boil, and then we'll heat again. For B, we're cooling, so our energy is going to go the other way. So we're going to uh, start at 1016 and end at 22. 1016 is going to be less than the boiling point, but greater than the melting. So the next thing we're going to have, we're going to start out as a liquid. We're going to go to 961. We're going to freeze, and then we'll go here. So our answer here will be negative. Okay. The one on number one, that answer is also going to be negative, too. The last one, you've got silver cooling from 2280, 2280 is above the boiling point so you've got silver that's a steam it's going to go down to 2163 then it's going to condense 
then it's going to cool off to 961. And then it's going to freeze, and then it's going to cool off to 32. All right, see if you can do those. I will set those up on uh, with the answer key online to show you how to put those together uh, so you can check your work.